Today, we got a slightly modified bug eye sprite in the shop. So the owner purchased this car pretty much as is from an estate. He doesn't know a whole lot about it other than he knows it has a 1275 in it and that the motor is not completely stocked, but he has no idea what's been actually done to it. Now it has been modified with some fender flares. He's got some pretty wide meats on here, at least for this car. It's 205 6013s. And it's been louvered on the bonnet there, and all the seams have been smoothed out. And it's got a 1275 with a side draft Weber and a header. And then all the firewall has been all smoothed out and has a front tilt conversion on it. Along with a luminar radiator, uh, alternator conversion, stuff like that. So what happened here was he actually had a bad starter on it. When he went to replace the starter, he's noticed that um, well, all the brake and clutch lines were actually going up here, down through this hole, these holes here, going down into the footwell and across, and then coming out by the starter, making it a little bit difficult for him to actually replace the starter. And they were all kind of in the way, and he said, well, let me put these lines going back up across here like they should be. And he's been able to get no clutch and no brakes since. And he even put in a brand new master cylinder and a brand new slave cylinder with a remote bleeder. So when I get in there and push the pedal and just nothing is happening at all. So what I'm gonna start with is we're gonna to try to force some fluid through there. Just to find out, will the mass of cylinder pump up if we force the fluid, put a little bit of pressure on top of the master cylinder here to try to figure out, does he just have a bad master cylinder out of the box? Or does he have some air trapped somewhere in the lines? What's going on? So. Let's get stuck into it. And for those of you who have been following along with my channel, there has been some progress made in the shop. I now have this wall done all the way back to the parts room. Put up a little bit of pallet racking and some shelving back here. I think that's where I want them. We'll live with it a little bit and see. Of course, you see the scaffolding is in the way there right now. And I've We've done this in two-tone with a stripe here that's a pretty close color to the MG dark engine red. It's still pretty much a disaster, but not as much of a disaster as it once was. And then whoo, I've got all this area cleaned out so I can get working on, get the scaffolding in here and start working on this area. And I've actually gone back here and we got one section here almost done where it's all insulated and that's where my exhaust outlet's going to be for when I have a car on the list on the lift running so we are making some progress it's just a bit slow and with today's uh prices of Materials is getting quite expensive too, but we're getting there. All right, so the first thing we're going to try is I have a master cylinder cap with an air fitting in it. I have to do this all the time with clutch master cylinders on bees, and it works a treat for those. And what we're going to do right now is just see. What happens if we put a little pressure on the top? Now I've got my air compressors regulated down to about five to eight PSI. 
don't want to don't need or want too much pressure here we'll just add some pressure there and then see what the pedal feels like some hose that I can put on the end of the blade nipple for the clutch so that I can run it down there in a container a clear hose hopefully if I can find it I'm still looking for all my stuff right now and see if I get any air coming out of there okay so we got this remote bleeder that the owner installed while he was playing with it trying to get everything working so what I'll do now We'll open up a splitter and see if we get anything coming out of it and if we get any air bubbles. Well, we got nothing at all coming out of it and I should be getting at a minimum a little bit of something coming out of there because of the pressure on top of the master cylinder should force it through. So that means next step is I gotta start tracing back. So since I got a new regulator on this air compressor and it's untested, I figure I'd just bump the pressure up a little bit more and try again just before I go any further. And I started actually getting something here, so so yeah, we're getting a little bit of fluid and I got some air initially we're still not building any pressure yet I feel some slight pressure but not much All right, so what I'm gonna do here now is I got something in here that's gonna pump the pedal for me real quick, just to double check some things. All right, go ahead and pump it. All right, hold it. Ooh, there comes some more. a bit of air. So we'll do that again. Go ahead. bubbles so maybe there's just some air stuck in there somewhere we just keep doing this maybe we'll get something All right but all I'm getting is a few bubbles but I'm not seeing any fluid movement here I should be seeing more fluid movement all right. All cold. I'm getting no fluid movement right now at all. Go ahead and push that and just uh, go ahead and let up. Now push and hold. All right, let up. Now, that's interesting. Now push and hold. There we go. All right, let up. I'm gonna go ahead and push. See, we're still getting there. All right, hold, let up. Now push and hold. There we go. Keep this up, we just might get all the air out of it. Okay, let up. 
push. All right, we'll do this a few more times and see what we get. Well, it seems like I'm able to get some air out of that, but we're still not building any pressure at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the master cylinder off and try bench bleeding it to see what happens. So the early Spridget uses a combined brake and clutch master cylinder that's very much the same unit as it's in, say, the MGA, but a different bore size. So one reservoir feeds both brake and clutch. But it's down in this bracket where you got one bolt through here and the other one's underneath the bracket. But you have to take this whole bracket up out of there in order to get that bolt out because there's braces going down on the inside here. Or let me show you. So here. you got these braces that go through here. Now there's no way you're going to get that bolt out of there without taking that whole bracket up out of the footwell far enough to get that bolt out. Now, sometimes you'll see somebody's gone in there and notched that, those braces underneath there. And it's actually probably a little more difficult to actually sit and fight it under the wheel well than it is just take these bolts out and, and just pull it up out of there. So you, once you get it up out of there, you can get that bolt out of there, no problem. Then you can slide that right on out of there. And once you slide this up, then you can, then you can get to these nuts. All right, so now that I got that up out of here, I went ahead and got a cap from a can. Just happens to be the right side to slide down in here and stay snug. So as I go to take these off, I can just set them right down into there. So if they drip, they drip into here. All right, now I got the master cylinder off of here. What I'm going to do, of course, this is a clutch, that's the brake side. Then put my thumb over there and see if it's building any pressure. Which it is building pressure. And they're sucking back in. Sometimes they don't want to suck back in. Sucking the fluid down really slow, but it is. Not really sucking it back in hardly at all. I think that's our problem. We'll break. Oops, slightly out of camera here, aren't I? <laughs> okay, well, I went ahead and took the master cylinder out, as you saw. And out of curiosity, I went ahead and tore it down to look at it. And the plungers were barely moving in there, like the seals, rubber seals were awful tight. So I actually ended up finding I had some kits and stuff in there that were actually different application but the same cups replaced actually replaced the one because i only had one and then i just honed the other slightly just so it would want to return and actually suck fluid back in so we're going to give that a try see what happens i don't because i think what was happening is it was pushing the fluid in out and then when it sucked it back in it just wouldn't suck any in so and went ahead and readjusted all these. I don't know where they were sitting. I just loosened them up. You just want to turn these out just until you get rid of the play out of here and then tighten them down. Because you don't want to keep, you don't want to put it in any further because then you'll lose stroke. But you want to tighten it up to enough to where you don't have slop in it. So now I'll fill this up and we'll give it another try. So we're going to try this one more time, see what happens. which we know we're gonna to have to get some, a little bit of air out of here somewhere. There we go. There's a bunch of air. All right, see if we got anything. A little bit. You hold it. Uh, it looks a lot more promising than it did. It's moving more fluid. All right, got pump it a couple times. And hold it. All right. At some point here, we should get a little bit of air just from having the lines loose. 
that won't show up yet because it hasn't been enough fluid yet. Hold it, hold it. Here's a couple of bubbles. There we go, a couple more bubbles. All right, do it again. do here in a minute. Get the car up in the air. I'm going to hold. And see if the slave cylinder is actually moving. All right. Let me check the fluid. You want to check the fluid fairly often. Now this master cylinder has got more capacity than like on an MGB, but you still want to check it fairly often because you do not want to suck any air in. Now I ended up finding some other issues with the car that led me to have to place an order for some parts that I didn't have on hand. So this is as far as we're going to take it today because we're pretty much out of time. I don't want the video to get any longer than what it currently is. So we'll get into the rest of it later, getting the brakes to actually work and getting the clutch to work fully and what I had to do to make that all happen. Until next time, this is MG Rob, later.